Hello and welcome to today's Heritage Help video where we'll be talking about using Ancestry Library Edition. My name's Alice and today I'll be taking you through how you can access Ancestry from your home and some tips for searching for your family history through Ancestry. Ancestry is a website which provides access to a whole lot of resources which are really useful for researching family histories. So these are things like electoral rolls and rate records to look up where your family lived, immigration records, military records, birth, death and marriage records, and many other records that can help you with your family history research. You might already know of Ancestry as a subscription service where you pay for a membership and gain access to these resources, but Ancestry is also available for free within Hobson's Bay libraries and within many other public libraries if you're not in the Hobson's Bay area. And during the current coronavirus lockdown, if you're a Hobson's Bay Library member, Ancestry is also available from your home computer. And I'll start today by showing you how to log on to that. If you're not a Hobson's Bay Library member, first of all, I would recommend that you sign up. It is free and provides not just access to Ancestry, but many other resources, ebooks, audiobooks, and so forth. And you can do that from the Hobson's Bay Library website, which I'm on here, simply by clicking join the library on the right hand side. If you're not in Hobson's Bay, I would recommend that you join your local library. Many local libraries are currently providing access to Ancestry free from your home. So if you are already a member, let's get started. The first place you'll want to go is to this discover menu up here and that will take you to our family history resources. So I've just hovered my mouse over discover and I'm going to click here on family history which has popped up. And you can see here we've got two family history resources which Hobson's Bay Library provides a subscription to, Ancestry and Find My Past. And we're going to be having a look at Ancestry today. So to access Ancestry from your home, you'll simply want to click on this button, login from home. So I'm just going to put my membership number in here. And that's just the number below the barcode on your library card. And then I'm going to put my PIN number in here and just press show my details. And now here you'll normally see a page with just a few details about your account. I'm just using this heritage account as an example. And you just want to click here to access Ancestry Library Edition. So let's click there and that will take me through to Ancestry. Now this little thing popped up on the side to try and save my password when I logged in with my library card and I'm just going to tell it I don't want to save my password today and get rid of that. So now here we are in the Ancestry home page. There's a whole lot of different links you can click on down here to access various resources but I'm just going to do a straightforward search so I'm just going to click on begin searching. And this takes me through to the search screen and I have a few options I can fill in here to start my search. For a very simple search, you can just fill in the name of an ancestor or a person you're interested in and click search. So I'm going to demonstrate today with a man named Augustus Henry Lawson who lived in Williamstown. So you'll just want to click up here first and middle name and I'd put in Augustus Henry and then in last name I'll just put in Lawson. Now at the moment Ancestry is searching all over the world and we want to narrow that search down so we're not getting results from Augustus Henry's who lived in America or who lived in Britain or who lived in other countries. So I'll click here and place your ancestor might have lived and we'll write in Williamstown. And as you can see once I've written Williamstown a list of different Williamstowns around the world pops up and I can choose which one I'm after. So I'll just click on this Williamstown down at the bottom in Victoria Australia and then I'll simply click this orange button which says search. Now if you didn't know as detailed a location as a suburb like Williamstown which I've put in you could simply put in the city, the state or even the country that you're searching in. And what this means is not that Ancestry won't search other records but that your results will be listed with the records nearest the location you've put in first. So if I were to put in Williamstown, I'll get locations in Williamstown, then I'll get locations around Melbourne, and then I'll get locations around Australia, and then finally locations that are outside of Australia. So the results of this search will be listed by their proximity to Williamstown. If I wanted, I could narrow this down, and I would click this box here next to exact two, and I have a few options to have it specific to this place, to this state and territory, to this state and the adjacent state, or to this country. And that way it would not show me those results that are further away, it would only show me the results, for example, if I clicked this place, which were in Williamstown, and then 
it would stop and I would get a much smaller range of results to have a look at. If you have a good idea about where your ancestor lived and where they were from, this can be useful. But if you know a name, but not all the details of their life and where they may have moved around, you'll probably want to leave this box unticked. I'll leave it ticked today because I know that Augustus Henry lived in Williamstown. So I'll just click to the side to get out of that menu. You can see it now says exact to this place. And now I'll click search. So this is what ancestry search results look like. As you can see, first of all, we've got a matching person. And this comes up if somebody else has put together a family tree on ancestry and included the person you've searched for on that tree. We're not going to go into detail about family trees today, but I just wanted to let you know that's what that result is. What we're looking for on ancestry is records. And under matching person, we've got matching records. And I'll just use this bar on the side to scroll down a little bit. So I'll just click and drag that down. And you can see I've got a whole lot of records about Augustus Lawson. And over on the right hand side, I can see some more details about the specific result relating to Augustus. So here I've got the name which appears on the electoral roll, Augustus Henry C. Lawson. And then below that, I've got some more information. So first off, I'm seeing the year 1919. So on the left hand side here, where it says 1903 to 1980, that's telling me the whole range of electoral rolls available on Ancestry. So that's just telling me what group of records it's looked in. It's looked at all the electoral rolls from 1903 to 1980, and it's found a result for Augustus in 1919. And as you go down this list of other results, you can see we've got an electoral role in 1924, 1922, and 1912, and so forth. It then tells me where he's living. So that's the suburb in Williamstown North. This is the electoral area, Melbourne Ports, and he's living in Victoria, Australia. Now there's a few different ways I can view this record. First of all, if I hover my mouse over this heading here, Australian electoral rolls, it will give me the same basic information in a slightly different format. So it's telling me that his name is Augustus Henry C. Lawson, he's male, this, ele this electoral roll was created in 1919, and it's in Williamstown. So if I clicked on that, and I'll just demonstrate that now, it will take me through to see those details. And then underneath it gives me some information about the source of this information. So it's from the Australian electoral rolls, and it gives me a bit of a description of what that is. Electoral rolls were compiled by each state during election years, and it tells me what information they provide, name of voter, gender, address, and occupation. So that's the basic information available on this electoral roll. But what I can also do is using this view button, I can view the electoral roll itself. So if I click there, and give that a moment to load. Here we're now looking at a scan of the electoral roll from 1919, which includes Augustus Lawson. Sometimes Ancestry will highlight the specific name you're looking for on the electoral roll, but that's not always the case, depending on how it's been scanned. So in this case, nothing's highlighted, and we're just going to have to look down this alphabetical list until we come across Augustus. And there he is right down the bottom. Now I can actually click, hold down and drag this page up so I can get a better view of where Augustus is. And there's his record, Lawson, Augustus Henry C. He's living at 3 Hotham Street, Williamstown. He's working as a customs officer and he's male. So by opening up this record and viewing the scan of the page, I've learned some extra information. I've learned the address that Augustus was living at. And I've also learned his occupation. And this is obviously really useful information when you're researching your family history to get an idea of what your ancestors life was like. You may even be able to visit the house where they lived and so forth. Another useful thing here, now I've opened up the electoral roll, is that I can see all the Lawsons who were living in Williamstown at this time. And if I check their addresses, I'll be able to find other people named Lawson who were living at the same address as Augustus. So if I look down the list here, we get to Lillian Lawson, who's living at 3 Hotham Street in Williamstown, and she's doing home duties. So that means cooking, cleaning, and looking after the house. So now I know that Augustus and Lillian were living together in Williamstown in 1919. I don't yet know the relationship between them. Perhaps they were a married couple, which is possibly the most likely result, but perhaps they were mother and child or father and child or brother and sister. So before we leave this record, I lastly just want to show you how you can save it for your own record. So it's on your computer. And you don't have to go through this search process again if you want to see it. So you just want to click this green save button in the top right hand corner there. 
I'll just click on that and you have two options. One is send image home and one is save to this computer. So if I click on send image home, the option I get is to have this image emailed to me. So you just simply put in your email address here, click here and type your email address again just to confirm that and then you press send email and this scan will be emailed to your email address and you'll just be able to log on and download it or view it through your email. I'll just press this X to close this and show you the other option. Once again I'll click on save and the other option I can click on is save to this computer. This has opened up my downloads folder on my computer and I have the option to save this file anywhere on my computer. So I might for example decide to save it on my desktop. I'll just click on desktop on the left hand side here. I could save it in any folder where I keep my family history resources. We'll just use the desktop as an example. And then clicking down here in file name I can actually provide any name for this file as well so I can find it later. So I might want to call it 1919 Augustus Lawson Electoral Roll. And that way when I come back to it later I'll know exactly what it is and why I've saved it. Then I'll just click save and that's accessible for me on my computer whenever I want. So that's an example of how to do a very basic search on Ancestry. I'm just going to go back now and show you a few more complicated things you can do to get more specific information you might be looking for. So I'm just going to click this back arrow in the top left hand corner to go back. I want to go back again to see all my results so I'll just click this all results button here. And here we are back at our results page. And just like I viewed that result from 1919, you could have a look at any of these other electoral rolls from other years. Now, next up, what I want to show you is how you can do a more detailed search. So if I click edit search here, I'll get some more options. And this box that's popped up is exactly the same as the box that we saw on the home page, where I have the opportunity to put in a name, a last name, and a location. But what we can also do is click on this button here, show more options. And now I can narrow down my search a bit. So for example, I now know that Augustus lived with a woman named Lillian and I might think were they married, I'll look for a marriage record for Augustus and Lillian. In that case, I'd be looking for a family member and specifically a spouse. So I click on spouse and I'd put in here Lillian. So now I'm searching for records about Augustus Lawson being married to a woman called Lillian. Now I don't know Lillian's maiden name so I'm just going to leave last name blank and you can always just leave a box blank if you don't know that piece of information. As with when we search for location before I can also choose whether I want this to do an exact search for Lillian or that I want it to do a more general search. So if I click exact that will search only for Lillian. If I don't click exact it might find records for women called Lily or Lillian with one L rather than two and so forth. I'm going to leave it a bit broader because quite often you will see people going by different variations of their name in different records. So now that I've put that information in I'm just going to click search again and we'll have narrowed down our search a bit. As you can see here we're still finding basically the same results which are electoral rolls and the reason for that is that those electoral rolls do include both an Augustus and a Lillian living together in Hotham Street and therefore it's considered them relevant. But if I want to specifically know whether these two were married I can use these filters on the left hand side to narrow down my search. So these buttons here allow you to look at specific types of records. I could choose only to look at census and voter lists and that would include the electoral rolls I'm looking at now. I can choose to look at birth, death and marriage records. I can choose to look at military records. I can choose to look at court, land, wills and financial records. So I'm looking today for birth, death and marriage records. So I would just click on that one. Now you can see straight away that I'm not finding a marriage record for Augustus and Lillian. Now there's two possibilities here. One is that they weren't married and the relationship between them was some other familiar relationship. The other is that I need to make my search a bit broader. Right now, if you remember from the start, we're searching exclusively for records in Williamstown and it may be that Augustus and Lillian didn't marry in Williamstown. Now I could click edit search, go back in there and untick that exact button, but I can also use these sliders here to change how exact my search is. So as you can see, this is the location Williamstown and this line here represents a scale from a broad search on the left hand side to an exact search on the right hand side. 
and this little bubble here is on the far right which means we're doing a very exact search so if I want I can simply click and drag this bubble along so this would be state and territory dragging it to the left again I'm looking for state territory and adjacent left again I'm looking at country so I might just drag it back to the right and decide I want to look for any marriage in Victoria and then I'll click update and it will run my search again and here you go the very first record we're seeing an Augustus Lawson married to a Lillian Duffy in 1882 And once again I could click on the heading here to view more details about that record and I can see that Augustus Lawson and Lillian Duffy got married in 1882 in Victoria unfortunately this record hasn't been scanned so I can't view the record itself I can only view this information which has been captured from the record for records which haven't been scanned if you do want to view them yourself often you'll be provided with a registration number and you can contact the office that holds those records to get a copy of the record usually by paying a small fee now one thing to be careful with when you're doing research is not to assume that because somebody shares the name you're looking for that is the same person so this is a record telling me that an Augustus Lawson married a Lillian Duffy in 1882 in Victoria and that could well be the Augustus and the Lillian that I've been looking at but you should always keep in mind that until you have some proof of connection between two records such as between the electoral roll and this marriage record you should never assume that that is the same relative so you may for example be looking to confirm by finding records showing that Augustus Lawson and Lillian Duffy had children with names you later find living in their house on the electoral roll and so forth but nonetheless this is still useful information you should would definitely record this for your records as you continue your search and I'll show you now how you might for example go about finding out what children Augustus and Lillian had to gather more information and match up more records about this couple so I'll go again back to all results and now I'm going to actually instead of clicking edit search I'm going to start a new search so I'll click there and I'm going to put in a bit of different information so this time rather than searching for Augustus himself I'm going to do a search to see if I can find any children of Augustus so in this instance I don't know what these children's names might be so I'm going to leave first a middle name blank and I'm just going to put in the last name Lawson and once again I'm going to put in the location Williamstown and I'm going to choose Williamstown Victoria from this list which has popped up now I'm going to click here and choose show more options and what I really want to demonstrate here is that you don't just have to do a search using the name of an ancestor you know about in this box up the top you can actually try different approaches to find new information so in this instance I'm going to do a search for people named Lawson and I'm going to add two family members to that search I'm going to add father Augustus Lawson and I'm also going to add a mother so now I've done that I'll click on mother and I'm going to add a mother Lillian now I won't put in a surname for Lillian because records do sometimes record the mother's maiden name on a birth certificate and depending on how those records have been entered into the online databases on ancestry she may not be showing up as Lillian Lawson but Lillian Duffy so now I've put that in I'm simply going to click search and we'll see what we find And here we have found a Reuben John Lawson. And interestingly, what we're actually looking at here is a World War I service record. So once again, I could click on that. We get a bit of information about the record. Reuben John was 30 years old when he signed up for World War I. He was born in about 1884. He's from Williamstown, Victoria, so that's very promising. That suggests that he's probably related to our Augustus Lawson who we looked at in the electoral roll and we can actually view his record here as we did with the electoral roll so I'll click view and we can see this key piece of information which is that Reuben's next of kin was his father Augustus Lawson living at 3 Hotham Street Williamstown so this Reuben is obviously a child of Augustus we can see here that he's 
30, almost 31 years old, making him born about 1884, which would match up well with that marriage record we found of Augustus and Lillian marrying in 1882. He's working as a boiler maker. He's been an apprentice to Grey Brothers Williamstown for two years and so forth. Once again, I could save this record if I wanted to. And in the case of a military record, which are usually multiple pages long, I can also use this arrow on the right hand side to turn the page and see what other information there is about Reuben. So if I click on that arrow, we'll load up a new page and we'll see he's signed his oath of enlistment. I could click again and see the next page of his record that provides me with some physical information about him. Five foot four and a half. He's got medium complexion, blue eyes, light brown hair. He's a Roman Catholic and so forth. And so you could click through and see, and there's often quite a lot of pages in a military record which you can view. So that's everything I wanted to show you about approaching your searching from that direction and some of the different ways that you can find details about your ancestors. Now I want to go back and show you a second approach that you can take to searching in Ancestry if you're looking for something much more specific. So I'm just going to click back here and this time I'm just going to click search up the top here to go back to our main search page. And what I want to show you now is this menu on the right hand side which is called Special Collections. Through this menu rather than searching across all collections on Ancestry you can narrow down to a very specific collection. For example if you wanted to search only the Victorian electoral rolls you can choose to do that. If you want to search only Australia's World War I records you can choose to do that and so forth. So what you do here is first of all you click on Card Catalogue and that provides a list of all the records which Ancestry holds all around the world. You can see we're looking at German records, we're looking at American records, we're looking at Australian records and so forth. So what you want to do is use these menus on the left hand side to narrow down the list of records available until you can see the specific set you're looking for. Today for example I'm going to look for rate records for some more information on Augustus Lawson. So rate records are one of the very useful selections of records available on Ancestry. They'll tell you a bit about where a person was living, what their job was, what their house was like, whether they owned their house and so forth. This gives you a good idea of your ancestors lifestyle. So on this left hand side here I can narrow down by the different type of records I'm looking for whether that's census records, birth, death and marriage records and so forth. This is similar to the list of categories we saw on our previous search page. And if I'm looking for rate records I'm going to find those in convict, criminal, land and wills. That might seem a bit counterintuitive but the key word here is land. So I'll click on that one and then once you choose one option you can actually narrow down further so I can see I can look at land records, tax records, criminal records and so forth and rate records fall under tax records because they're about the government collecting the rates, the tax on your land. So we'll click on tax lists and you can see here I'm still seeing a huge variety of records from Nova Scotia, from Pennsylvania and so forth. So I'm going to want to narrow this down by location I've got a whole lot of different continents I can choose from and I'm going to choose Australia. And here now you can see I have the option to view Victorian rate books. Once I click on that option, I come back to a similar search screen to what I've seen before but the difference is now I'm only searching within rate books and that way I can get a much more directed search and find much more specific results that I'm after. Now once again I would conduct a search that I have previously, so I put in Augustus here for a first name, last name I put in Lawson, and location I will put in here, so this is where the person we're looking for lived. I'll put in Williamstown, once again I'll select Williamstown Victoria from this list. And I'm also going to add something else here which is that I can add a keyword and there I'm going to add the name of Augustus's street because that way I'll be sure to find the rate records pertaining to him when he lived in Hotham Street which is what I've been looking at at the moment. And this is a good way to narrow down your search especially if your ancestor has a common name. So then I'll simply click search and here we have some results pertaining to Augustus Lawson living in Williamstown. We're looking at the 1880s, 1890s and so on. 
So if I wanted to look at one of these records, I could simply do what I've done before, which is click view record. And I get a little bit of information here. I'm looking at Augustus Lawson in 1895, living in Williamstown. And then I could click view and see a scan of the rate book itself. Rate books can be a little bit hard to read. Once again, I can use these buttons on the right hand side to zoom in if I choose to. So I'll just press that plus button here to make that a little bit bigger. And I can also click on the page and drag it around to see the part I want to see. So if I drag it over here, I can see the list of various people in this rate record. The heading shows me that I'm looking at Hotham Street and second on the list, we have Augustus Lawson. As you can see here, we can read some information about Augustus from this rate record. We can see surname Augustus Lawson. He's working as a CH boatman, that is a customs house boatman. This column provides information on whether he's the owner or the tenant of his property. The O here stands for owner, and we can see that because in addition, this name of owner column is empty. So Augustus owns his home at 3 Hotham Street. And then we can find out a bit of information about the house itself. It is a house, we can see with the ditto marks from the record above. It's four rooms and these ditto marks come from the W above. It's a bit of a scrawly W, but the W stands for wood. So we know a bit about Augustus's life. He's living in a four room wooden house. Not very big, but he does own that house. He's working as a boatman. And then we can get some information if we drag the page across about how much the house is worth, how much money he's paying in rates and so forth. Once again, I could save this record using the save button in the top right hand corner. So that's the end of our introduction to Ancestry today. We've learned how to search by name. We've learned how to do some more indirect searches by looking for family members. And we've learned how to search through specific records such as rate records to find more specific information. As well as that, we now know how to save the records that we do find to our computers so we can find them later on. I hope this video has been useful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at heritage at hobsonsbay.vic.gov.au to ask any questions about what was in today's video, for any more information about using Ancestry, or if you have any research inquiries that you'd like us to help you with, whether that's family history, local history, or any other aspect of history, especially the history of Hobsons Bay that you're interested in. And I'll put that email address up on the screen at the end of this presentation so you can get in touch. I hope this has been helpful to you and best of luck with your research.